addicted to food. We're all addicted to food. Food, 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 food. <laughs> now, there are two types of food addiction. There's the one we talked about already, which is dopamine stimulation of the brain from eating high, that caloric surge into the bloodstream. Remember that? Like cocaine, eating those high, like oils and sugars, and, and that's the... And then there's the second part, which we're going to talk about now, which is called detoxification or withdrawal, which make, means that you feel like crap. Mm, detox shakes. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. We'll gain valuable insights from Dr. Joel Foreman, a distinguished physician, best-selling author, and a top expert in nutrition and dietary wellness. Dr. Foreman has devoted his career to studying the deep connection between diet, health, and the prevention of disease. In today's video, we'll explore how many people struggle with food addiction and how it can lead to a confusing relationship with hunger and how to detoxify your relationship with food. Dr. Foreman will explain the difference between toxic hunger as a result of unhealthy eating habits and true hunger, which is our body's natural signal for nourishment. We'll also discuss practical strategies for overcoming food addiction and embracing a healthier lifestyle through a food detox. Dr. Foreman is the author of several influential books, including Eat to Live, the end of dieting, and food over medicine, where he explores how our eating habits can transform our health and our lives. Through his research and practical advice, Dr. Foreman provides a roadmap to not only overcome food addiction, but also to distinguish between toxic hunger and true hunger. Food addiction often stems from the consumption of highly processed foods that disrupt our natural hunger signals. Toxic hunger, driven by these foods, creates a cycle of cravings and overeating. In contrast, true hunger is our body's natural way of telling us it needs nourishment. Understanding and addressing these differences can lead to healthier eating habits and better overall health. If you're ready to transform your relationship with food and learn how to identify and respond to true hunger, make sure to stick around for this insightful discussion with Dr. Foreman. Oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. Let's get this detox started. Like, for example, if you're drinking 10 cups of coffee a day and you stop drinking coffee, do you feel better or worse when you stop? Worse. worse. Because you're going to get headachy and shaky and weak and fatigued from the detoxification from the caffeine. If you're snorting cocaine or smoking cigarettes and you stop. Do you feel better when you stop cigarettes? Eventually you feel better, but the short -term, in the short term, you feel worse, a lot worse, right? Itchy and irritable and anxiety. You can't tolerate it. But here's what I'm saying to you. I'm saying that the feeling worse, the detox, that's right directed. That's the body's efforts to remove the noxious substance from the tissues, to circulate them to get it to use the kidney and liver and the bloodstream to get them out of the body. That feeling worse means you're getting better. Feeling better means you're getting worse. In other words, I could give you, make you feel better by giving you another cup of coffee or giving you a little more cocaine or another smoke of cigarettes. You'll feel better, but feeling better isn't getting better. Feeling better is getting worse. Anything that makes you feel better is bad for you. Well, almost anything that makes you feel better is bad for you. Dr. Foreman explains more how it's not about making you feel better initially. Like, for example, I can give you a product from the health food store, maybe an herbal remedy, and I could make your heart go faster or your heart go slower. Or I make you urinate more or urinate less. Or make you wake you up or put you to sleep. Or make you, in other words, I can give you pharmacologic substances, but their pharmacologic efficacy is proportional to their toxicity. It's the toxic part of the natural substance that's having these biological effects. Because it's natural doesn't make it less toxic. I mean, a lot of the drugs doctors use came from natural herbs that were now isolated and, and, and refined. The point is we want to live in a manner to avoid the need for medicinal substances, whether natural or otherwise. We want to not have the need for medicinal substances. Plants give us nutritive substances, but those plants that, have, that are highly toxic or have medicinal properties and are drug, have drug effects and can have drug effects, but all, it has a, a pharmacologic effect or a drug-like effect. We learned in medical school that they work by blocking or interfering or poisoning some natural body action. In other words, they're toxic. Anything with a pharmacologic effect is toxic or poisonous. 
toxic. <laughs> Dr. Foreman will describe what he calls toxic hunger. Now I'm telling you this because we build up cell retain toxins, like free radicals, like advanced glycation end products. And I do want you to remember that term AGE, your advanced glycation end products, because it's, it's one of the major toxins that build up in people that have a high glycemic diet. Glycemic, advanced glycemic end product means that the glucose moieties get attached to proteins and it ages us. That's where the diabetic becomes blind or they get developed nerve damage in their legs or they get kidney failure, the buildup of AGEs, and these AGEs build up in all of us who are non-diabetic too and age us prematurely. Now Dr. Foreman explains just how amazing the body is. So the point is, is that the body is a miraculous, self-healing, self-repairing machine that looks to remove those noxious products from the body. If we don't overburden it with stresses, if we let it. And when does the body most effectively remove toxins? When? Sleep. When we sleep or when we're not eating. And you know, that's called the catabolic phase of the digestive cycle. Because the word anabolic means to build. And the anabolic phase of the digestive cycle means you're eating and digesting. And when you're eating and digesting, you're not detoxing and repairing as much. It's in the catabolic phase when you're not eating and digesting, when you're sleeping, when, you're, when, your, body, when your stomach's not digesting. I always say, the longer you live in the catabolic phase of the digestive cycle, the longer you live. Did you follow that? Yeah. Okay. I want to be clear about that. We'll talk about that if we have time more. Now, most Americans don't even enter the catabolic phase hardly at all. They're eating all the time. They always, they take their car to the gas station, they fill it up with gas. Instead of driving it around now and burning off the gas, what, with what the energy they just filled it with, they drive around the blo one block and back to the gas station again. And they fill it up again. Your car was already full. What happens to that gas? Well, it runs, on the, it runs out of the tank, onto the pavement. But with a human, if you keep eating when you're not hungry, when you didn't burn off your calories you took in, your body expands. The gas tank is finite and fixed, but not your body. You can get bigger and bigger and bigger as you keep feeding the more energy than you need. We need gas. Why do you need more gas? We need gas and cigarettes. Now, the doctor will describe the difference between toxic hunger and true hunger. So what happens to people is this. They eat a meal and their glucose curve goes up, right? And, their, and detox is somewhat inhibited. And then, maybe a couple hours later, they're finished digesting. And they enter the, the catabolic phase of the digestive cycle. Now it's that catabolic phase when they're not digesting is when we're going to be living off the glycogen that was stored in the liver and muscle tissue from the glucose we ate. So did any of you guys eat breakfast this morning? You did? Some of you ate breakfast. Well, as you're sitting here listening to me talk, Breakfast is probably digested already, out of your bloodstream, stored as glycogen. Now you're at 50 calories an hour, you're living off that glycogen, it was stored. You're in the catabolic phase. Digestion is over. But for most people, their body is so Ill, unhealthy and toxic that the minute they enter that catabolic phase, they finish digesting, they start to feel shaky and weak. They start to feel headachey, anxiety. They start to no longer feel well. And they don't feel well, and what do they do? Have a little drink of coffee, have a little soda, have a chocolate chip cookie, pop an M&M, snack, right? Have a donut, have a coffee break. They can't stop putting substances in the orifices of their body. That was a joke. <laughs> Dr. Foreman will now describe how people confuse the effects of toxic hunger with being hungry. See how I haven't labeled toxic hunger there? Toxic hunger? Because that's not, because that shakiness, see when people are getting headachey and weak and shaky and stomach cramping, they think it's hunger. Don't, they, don't you think most people think that's hunger? Weakness and shakiness and headaches and stomach cramping, they eat again. They eat all day long because they feel like eating again because their body is so toxic, they don't tolerate not eating in the catabolic phase. They gotta keep eating all the time. Otherwise they don't feel it. They have to over eat calories. They have to stay out of the, they, they have to stay out of the catabolic phase because they don't feel well enough. If they were truly healthy and their nutrient needs were met and they were not toxic, then they would pass through the catabolic phase and it's the second half for the third, actually it's the last third of the catabolic phase where most of the fat is burned off your body. If you keep going from the catabolic phase to the, back to the catabolic phase, you're never gonna lose any fat, you're gonna keep gaining fat. 
Your body preferentially uses glycogen, breaks down glycogen to glucose first. When your glycogen stores are high, it's when the glycogen stores start to diminish that you start to use more fat. You're still using fat and glucose both for energy, but, it's more, but the ratio of glucose to fat goes down as the glycogen gets utilized. Are you following this? I follow. Now, the doctor will explain how you can't add weight by responding to true hunger. Most Americans don't live in the catabolic phase, and when the glycogen starts to be go down to get to low levels, what do you think the body then does before it will break down muscle tissue and lose body weight to, for energy? No, it won't do that. It'll start, give you a signal to eat, it, which I call true hunger. You see on the graph where true hunger is marked at the end of the catabolic phase of the digestive cycle? True hunger becomes a precise computer to direct you to the exact amount of calories you need each day within 25 calories a day to maintain your lean body mass. If there's no toxic, true hunger does not direct you to eat to become overweight. You can't put fat on your body by responding to hunger. You can only have put fat on your body if you were eating outside of the demands of true hunger, either because of toxic hunger or recreational eating. Are you understanding this now? Now, if I continue not to eat after I'm hungry, then your body will, you know, the brain can live on, can break down muscle tissue to get glucose for the brain. But your body doesn't want you to do that. I flew in here yesterday, drove from the airport to Whole Foods Market, bought my, brick, my, my dinner, and I, I had a lot of good stuff to eat. You know, I had a salad bar with the beans on top, I had some pistachio nuts, I had, I had, a, I had some lychee nuts, I had a really good dinner. And when I got up this morning, I'm not hungry. I didn't eat anything today yet. I'm not going to eat if I don't feel like eating. I know when I get hungry, I'll get hungry and I'll eat. Some meals, some days I may eat three meals a day, some days I may eat four meals a day, some days I may eat two meals a day, based on how big a meal I ate yesterday or how much exercise I did yesterday, how much exercise I'm doing today. It all based on your body gives you instinctual drives to make to tell you when to eat and when not to eat. Dr. Foreman will explain what most Americans are doing. Now, most Americans, though, most people out there, I don't know about you guys, you could tell me the truth, but most Americans go from one anabolic phase right to another. They never enter the catabolic phase. The minute digestion stops and they eat, have, you know, so you could eat frequently to keep your body, could stop you from detoxing and stop you from going into the catabolic phase. Or you can just eat a big meal with a lot of meat and cheese or a lot of concentrated calories that takes like three or four hours to digest. Right? Go in and have big breakfast with like eggs and bacon and, and, and croissants and Danish and other, you know, maple junk people eat. I can't believe it. It's like the cake diet, right? They, everything's cake. Like for lunch, they have, for breakfast, they have a little tiny cake, a small cake. They call it a muffin. It's a cake. Take the icing off, it's a muffin. It's just a cake, right? <laughs> or they actually fry the cake, fry it on a pan. And then they, it's a pancake, and then they pour sugar, more sugar on top of it. And that's like a, oh my goodness, it's like a pancake. It's worse than a cake. It's a cake cake. <laughs> Then they, have, then they make it into a pizza, right? They, put, they make a cake out of pizza and they put some tomato sauce on top with cheese and make another, and they have a cake, another cake for lunch. It's like unbelievable. A cake flavored pizza, pizza flavored cake, and one more treat. Cake and a pizza. Two extra large pizzas and a lava cake. Here are the doctor's final thoughts. Anyway, so we're talking here about they're eating so much food that the digestion keeps going right to the next meal. I'm hungry. Thanks for watching Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence-based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments. Your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep deprocessing for a healthier, longer future, Let's make this journey together.